page 52, Prelude in C by J.S. Bach. This is probably one of the most famous pieces ever written. Most every piano student, if they have a teacher, are going to play this piece eventually. C major, well it's in C, it's in the title. No sharps or flats, we're using all the white keys except for the accidentals, wherever it's thrown in. And it's just a series of broken chords. I mean it looks ugly, you think, good lord, look at all these sixteenth notes. No, it's, it's just, look, just take the first two beats and take all the notes in both hands. Here, hold them down, and an E, and then right here we have a G, and a C, and an E. It's a C chord. It's a broken C chord. The whole measure is that. And the next one is a different chord. This chord. The whole thing is that way. It's just a series of chord or chords, or chord progression is a series of chords. That's all it is. The rhythm is the same throughout. It's just one E and a two E and a. It's not real fast. It's not a fast piece. And I'm just transferring weight, playing it all legato. Uh, it just my my wrist is circling a little bit, but it does that on its own. I don't make anything happen here. I just relax and transfer weight, and that circle just kind of happens. The whole piece is that way. Now it switches up a little bit when you get to the end on page 55, toward the bottom. Let's start like on measure 31. You're still doing your. here and then I measure 33 look out it's still a broken chord it's just a different pattern just watch this fingering and it's fine here it's a, it's extended position for an F chord and then fourth finger fourth finger and you can stay there you don't have to use fourth finger again if you and then here it's important because we're, we're in this chord. And then you're up here. I use fourth finger on that D. And then for the end, it's two, three, five. Here. A block chord at the end. Imagine that. That's really the only difference. Otherwise, you just enjoy it. It's beautiful. Dynamic wise, well, that's just a suggestion because Bach didn't do dynamics. It, it's, it's up to you, and there's no real melody except maybe these half notes. You're just following the chord progression, so play it all about the same. You are finger pedaling the left hand. Let's talk about that. Finger pedaling. We do this quite a bit in piano. At least I do. It's another way of interpreting music. We talk about interpreting music. I've mentioned a few things about inter how to interpret music. Just tip of the iceberg. But one of the things is we can finger pedal things. That is, we can hold the notes down longer than they're written, so the sound sounds longer. The finger is doing what the pedal would do. It holds the note out. And here, the half note and that tied E at the beginning, we're finger pedaling that. Otherwise, it would be this. But Bach wrote to finger pedal those, so it's we're holding them down. That's something. Just keep that in mind, and when you're interpreting pieces of music, arrangements of things, that maybe you could hold a note out a little longer if you wanted to to help. Especially a bass note. We like the bass note. See, the most important part of the music is the melody. That's what you want to hear if there is a melody. And in this case, it's really the chord progression. But then the next most important part is the bass. So the top and the bottom parts. That's what we want to hear. So a lot of times, because you don't want the bass to overpower the melody, but you can finger pedal the bass to hold it out, just make it a little longer. How much longer? Well, it depends on the situation. You have to just decide on a case-by-case -case basis. You experiment with it. What do you like to hear? Now, if it's classical music, if you're Chopin or Beethoven or something like that, 
play it the way it's written. Don't be finger paddling too much stuff. Although I still finger pedal Beethoven's and an Alberti bass pattern. Remember Alberti bass here? A lot of times I'll finger pedal the bottom note, the first one. Depends on the music and what the music needs. So sometimes I'll do that. That is part of interpreting. But be very careful when playing standard classical music on what you're doing there. Don't switch it up too much. But if it's a more modern arrangement or something, whatever. Yeah. Do, have fun with it. I don't have a lot to say on this piece because it's just a bunch of chord progressions and you can read them as well as I can. Now if you're going to read this and turn the page, you got a problem because this is a steady series of sixteenth notes constantly. And so you have to figure out a way to turn the page at the bottom without messing things up. Good luck with that. Uh, you can't really play all these notes in one hand because that's another possibility. You can play that F in there and hold it down. So maybe while you do that you can quickly turn the page with the left hand. I don't know. Otherwise I'm not sure what to tell you on turning the page. Ideally with this piece you memorize it really. It, 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 a, lot, a lot of people just memorize this piece. Now they're suggesting pedal throughout. Legato pedal. A lot of people do. They use legato pedal here. changing the pedal after each one every two beats. When I was in college and played broke music, Bach and Scarlatti and all those, I was not allowed to use pedal on anything because this is actually a harpsichord originally for harpsichord. There are no pedal on that. You had to do it yourself. So I was not allowed to use pedal on this and I, my recommendation, don't use pedal unless your teacher tells you to. But otherwise you don't need pedal on this piece at all. It's so one of the beauties if you have a, like an electronic keyboard and you don't have a pedal. Play harpsichord music because they had a short keyboard so maybe your short keyboard will fit and you may not have a pedal. They didn't use pedal. So play, if you have a harpsichord setting on your keyboard that's even better. So play Scarlatti or Bach or one of the composers back in the 1700s and before. Have fun with them. That's, that's great. I don't think I need to play with me on this because you can do this once you get to this level of music you don't need me to. However, I've done a play with me on almost everything in this book so far so I'm going to go ahead and do it very slowly. I'm not going to use any pedal and when I get to the bottom of page 53 I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn the page. I'm going to count in again another four counts and then do the rest of it. If you want to play along go ahead but I'm not performing it here. This is just really really super slow. Now to help us out here I put the metronome on eighth notes. So it's beating eighth notes here. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a. So hopefully you can play it that fast. We'll see. It may be too fast. It goes a little faster than that but hopefully we can do it at that speed. So I'm going to give us four quarter note counts and then we come in. One and two and ready and go and one and two and three and four.
stop and turn the page. Mm -hmm. One and two and ready and go and one and two and.